In terms of eliminating the coronavirus, or more accurately, SARS-CoV-2, there are a number of different options, some more feasible than the next. The first option is elimination. That is, we all stay indoors and away from public gatherings until the virus peters out. This is precisely what Australia and New Zealand are doing, the so-called social lockdown. The potential result is great for Australians and New Zealanders, but gets us no closer to solving the worldwide threat. Even if we manage to get down to zero cases of COVID-19 in Australia, we still can't open our borders until the entire world can say the same. All it takes is a single asymptomatic individual to enter the country and slip through customs, and the whole crisis starts over again. However, locking our borders forever will quite frankly destroy our economy. We need international students and tourism for our economy to prosper. One solution would be to test every incoming traveller for COVID-19, but unless we develop a very cheap, effective and most importantly quick test, then that's simply not going to happen. It might be a temporary solution, but it's probably not something that we could go on doing forever. The next option is herd immunity. That is, 80 to 95% of the population become immune to the virus and the virus eventually stops spreading. Herd immunity can be achieved through one of two ways. The first way, develop a vaccine. I'm sure you've all heard that a vaccine is at least 12 to 18 months away. This figure doesn't ever seem to get smaller. I'm not taking anything away from researchers. The problem is incredibly hard to solve. From interviews I've seen with virologists, a vaccine may never be found. The problem with coronaviruses is that they infect the upper respiratory tract, which our immune system isn't great at protecting. Although it feels like the inside of your body, the upper respiratory tract is actually considered an external surface when it comes to immunisation. As University of Queensland's Professor Ian Fraser told the ABC, it's a bit like trying to get a vaccine to kill a virus on the surface of your skin. The second way that herd immunity can be achieved is through natural infection. That is, we slowly lift our lockdown restrictions, allowing a controllable number of people to become naturally infected by the disease. Some of us will unfortunately die, but most people will survive and will develop antibodies to fight off the virus. However, this method is not without its risks. One, we don't know how long any such natural immunity will last. Is it forever, or is it only for a year or two? We won't know the answer to that question for at least a few more years until we can analyse the data. Two, we would have to be very, very careful controlling the spread. It could easily get out of hand, see the likes of New York or Italy. If too many people develop COVID-19 at the same time, our healthcare system may become overburdened. I don't think this option to achieve herd immunity is particularly attractive to the public at large. The last option, and probably the most realistic, is that we just have to learn to adapt to the disease. With time, we'll become better at discovering who has COVID-19, we'll become better at treating it – there's a few prospective antiviral drug treatments being trialled at the moment – and we'll all learn to become more aware of how to avoid catching the illness. Does this mean that we'll never be able to shake hands again? I'm not sure, but as long as there's the looming threat of COVID-19 in the back of our minds, we may not have a choice. Mm.